Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight filling in for Alex, and I've got in the studio with me Anthony Gucciardi from StoryLeak, and he's got an interesting story to go over with us. Three disturbing Fukushima facts that the government is covering up. Tell us about that, Anthony. So it's funny that we don't trust the NSA. You know, we go over there and try to give them a little bit of a check and balance. They throw us out and say we're crazy. Yeah. Why should we trust the government when it comes to a radiological explosion event like the mega disaster of Fukushima? Yeah. I mean, they say it's safe. They say it's perfectly great. Everything's fine. Everything's happy. The Japanese officials have been caught time and time again admitting on record they lied about the levels. They downplayed it. They ignored it. Well, their meters didn't even go up to the, to the max. They weren't even capable of recording what the radiation was. We find out now that it's like 18 times higher than they said. Well, That's tremendous. They turned the counters off. <laughs> yeah. They don't want you to know. And my That's whole right. thing is this thing is bigger than we even thought. And it's coming out more and more because even I thought, you know, even researching this, that 2011, 2012, that's where the massive amount of radiation was coming from. You know, we're mm -hmm. dealing with those effects. Potentially, they're going to try and take the rods out and make it explode again sometime soon, maybe this month or the next. But it's even worse than I thought. In September, last September, it was found that the radiation levels were skyrocketing and spiking to highest amounts on record. Yeah, this is going on now for well over two years. Yeah. And it just keeps going and going and going. This is a story that just, they, they still don't have this under control. It's still right on a razor's edge. Yeah, so let's be clear. It did not peak in 2011, 2012. It's mm -hmm. getting worse. Yes. And they don't even know how to deal with it. They accidentally turned off the power. <laughs> I mean, these, this is such a mismanagement on a scale that makes me think it's not even possible to handle it so improperly. It's, it's unbelievable what's going on. Let's look back specifically as well as to what happened with all the radioactive uh, cesium and everything like that. Most people think it just kind of went into the air and disappeared or maybe a little bit went into the ocean. 20%, according to independent research, TEPCO later had to admit this, 20% went on Japanese land and started killing people there. 2% went on foreign lands just from this initial release. 78%, mm -hmm. according to this independent research, was just massively funneled into the Pacific Ocean. And that's why you have fish with 258 times the quote-unquote safe allowable uh, levels of radiation yeah. coming in, and people are eating it, and they don't even know. And they just had another release of more radiation. Of course, they said, oh, don't worry about it. It's, it's, it's low level. But then they kind of rolled that story back and said, uh, well, there was for a couple hours it was really high, but then we got that down. <laughs> so it just keeps going and going because they've got these massive tanks that have highly radioactive water that uh, is from the original disaster. And they see that that's leaking down into the ground. So they're going to build this incredibly expensive ice wall to try to contain that because it's leaked down into the groundwater there. It sounds like a cartoon idea. Yeah. It, it's just Looney Tunes. Yeah. And then you look, even Huffington Post now, an article, it's a good article called Fukushima Forever, basically says it's just going to leak forever into the ocean. And what are we going to do about it? And people are told from the news that regurgitates the government diarrhea of information that nothing's wrong. Everything's fine. You know, it's conspiracy now. Even though Facebook in Japan is blowing up with all these people getting radiation sickness, and we could talk about that, mm -hmm. the nosebleeds, mm -hmm. they're not only saying that's crazy and you're a conspiracy theorist if you talk about it, but they're saying that those people are literally insane. Yeah, that's a story that we have on InfoWars from Natural News. Japanese do doctors ordered to cover up mass radiation sickness across the population. That's the nosebleeds that they see happening now. People are complaining about that on Facebook, and the government's response is, move along, there's nothing to see here. This is something, though, that doesn't just affect people in Japan. It's also people in the U.S., of course, that, are, that are, have some exposure to this because it's polluting the ocean, the fish, as well as the prevailing westerly winds when Chernobyl happened, you had a tremendous amount of exposure to people in Western Europe because of prevailing westerlies. We're going to see the same sort of thing happening here if there's a major disaster when they try to take these nuclear fuel rods out. Well, we're already seeing it here because they found hot particles as far as Boston. San mm -hmm. Francisco, the soil samples, they found particles as well. So it's already happening in just one of those particles. Talk to any of the experts. You inhale one of those particles, it's bad news. It's pretty much game over. The cancer might come later at a later point. But just one of those hot particles is horrible. And we're seeing them come across as far as Boston. I mean, for the people that are saying that the Fukushima disaster has nothing to do with the United States, they're deluding themselves. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a complete insanity that they're saying that. And that's why I'm writing articles like this. We're talking about this to get this out. 
because the establishment will just brick wall it every single time because it's such a big hot issue. If people actually knew about it, we would freak out and rightfully so. Mm -hmm. So that's why they ignore it and ignore it and downplay it. And then the media, you know what the media does with things like the NSA or the TSA. They take what the government says and they spin it even more. Well, imagine the government saying that Fukushima is great and amazing. The media spins it further and then says as a conspiracy uh, theorist, even say radiation is bad pretty much. Right. <laughs> there was yeah. figures saying that radiation is good. Yeah, and, and colder, yeah. Yeah, low-level <laughs> radiation is great when, in fact, low-level can actually harm you more than a lot because of the way the body works. Just a little bit of something can in some ways, like a microchip, kind of destroy everything as opposed to a large amount. But you can't, you can't see it, you can't feel it, you can't taste it. You don't see an immediate effect. This is something that, as you pointed out, is a long-term reaction. It's like somebody, an increase in the number of cancers, and they can come back and say, well, gee, we don't really know where that came from. And there you was know, a Five years, ten that. years, yeah, exactly. So this is something that the government uh, doesn't want to alarm people about, and they don't really care. They're not going to look out for our health. We certainly know that. We can see that from the way they allow GMO and other things into our food supply that we also know have long-term subtle side effects but this really is tremendous the spent reactor fuel that's there is 85 times the radioactivity that was released at chernobyl so we have a lot of potential exposure to that and as you were pointing out before they're going to do something now with the fuel rods they're actually going to try to get these down yeah exactly they're going to do a precise surgical operation that some of the experts say is over a 90 percent chance is going to fail and what that could mean is another explosion at Fukushima. You know, even though there's been countless already, we don't even know the true number. It could be another one mm -hmm. coming in the very near future. And they're going to try to pull these things out, and they're possibly bent or damaged because there's been this oh, they earthquake damaged, there. Yeah. Of course, yeah. So they've got to pull these things out without touching each other. There's like over a thousand of them there. The same <laughs> people that accidentally turned the power off. Yeah. You know, the, the same people that want to build an ice wall around the uh, plants that yeah. are actually addressing the issue. <laughs> And, of course, the same people that said, actually, yeah, the, the radiation emitted from the initial explosion was not that much. And then they were continuing to lie until an independent review came, an independent scientific review, and said it was not only two and a half times more radiation initially, but that, of course, they were dumping it in the Pacific Ocean on purpose. Mm -hmm. And then TEPCO came and said, yeah, we were going to tell you about that. You know, our, our, our readings were a little bit off, but somehow independent scientists on a low budget managed to find the exact readings and exactly where the uh, cesium and radioactive material was going. So TEPCO is a bunch of liars, and they want to... It's a large themselves. corporation. Of course. That's looking out for their corporate profits. It's they like don't. this. It's if Monsanto owned a nuclear power plant. That's how much we can trust these <laughs> That's people. right. That's right. Very much like that. Yeah, the former head of the NRC, it's, it's Dr. Yakso has said that continuing to put a Band-Aid on a Band-Aid is not going to fix the problem of Fukushima. And he's pointed out that the nuclear power plants here in the U.S. essentially share the same design flaw. And GE and uh, other companies who made this reactor have gone through and they've had the Japanese government, the Canadian government, sign these essentially waivers, releasing them from any liability for this. But he's pointed out that they all have this fundamental design flaw that you've got to keep these cooling power sources continuously going no matter what, no matter what happens, whether it's a terrorist attack or whether it's an earthquake or a flood or a tornado or a hurricane. Those backup power plants have to keep going and keep it cooling because these spent fuel uh, reactors, these spent fuel pools are just as dangerous as the reactor. So just as we saw with Three Mile Island and Chernobyl, we saw reactors that blew up. Now the public is starting to realize that the spent fuel is just as dangerous and it's going to be there for thousands of years as well. That's ex exactly right. And when I talk to these nuclear experts, what amazes me the most is what they say off air, what they tell me in emails, basically that the whole system is beyond fixable almost. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it is. It's, it's, there's ways to do it right with nuclear power. There are, but they're not doing it right. That's why three out of four or up to 90% of every single nuclear power plant in the United States right now is leaking. Every single one. And Obama wants to put dozens more on the East Coast. Oh, yeah. That's his favorite source of power is nuclear. He thinks that's the greenest thing out there. <laughs> they're not just putting Band-Aids on things. They're just making the problem worse. They're making more mm -hmm. Fukushimas. They're mm -hmm. not even trying to bandage it. It's just amazing to me that they can portray carbon dioxide, which every animal, every human breathes out, and that plants use just like we use oxygen. They can portray that as the most dangerous thing on Earth. And yet, when you look at the most dangerous thing on Earth, these highly radioactive spent fuel pools and these nuclear reactors, they, they tell us just the opposite. They tell us that's the greenest thing on Earth.
No, no, no. You don't understand. <laughs> CO2 is evil. Yeah. Sustainable clean coal is evil. But actual radiation and nuclear energy from power plants that are leaking 90% across the United States and Fukushima and Chernobyl, that's all really good. And radiation doesn't hurt you. Yeah. But CO2 will kill you. It, it reminds me, they had this... Uh they had this story, When the Wind Blows, and they made it into an animated story back in Britain. It was a Britain, uh, British animated film back in, the, back in the 80s. And it was this couple who was kind of fuddy-duddy, and they were re there was a nuclear accident or a nuclear war anyway. There was uh, a lot of nuclear fallout headed toward them, and they just innocently read the government pamphlets about what they were to do. And it was just total baloney. It was like sticking your head in the desk with a duck and cover exercises, you know, when there's incoming nuclear missiles, you know, don't worry, duck and cover, stick your head in the, the desk. It's the same sort of thing. And that's what we're getting with these nuclear reactor issues. Let's put the puzzle pieces together right now here on air. They're not telling you about how to even prepare, prepare yourself. They're not telling you about even the basics of iodine or anything. They're telling you nothing. They're mm -hmm. saying everything's great. We're turning the counters off. We're raising the allowable safe limits, which we're not safe anyway, in the food. We're just not going to tell you about anything. Compare that to what else they're doing in these agencies. Compare that to what they're doing with Obamacare, you know, burning and radiating people all day long. That's safe, too. Radiation mm -hmm. is great, but it's more than that. It's with the NSA, the TSA, the DEA, the DHS. All of these organizations are in this same structure. If they're not telling you about Fukushima and the radiation that's killing you and your family, what else are they not telling you about? It's a simple mm -hmm. connect the dots. Big Pharma is killing you. They're patenting a bunch of natural substances, adding a bunch of toxins, and then the side effects are on average about 280, sometimes 560, including sudden death. They're making money off it. They know. Mm -hmm. I've had a biotechnology official, I've actually talked about it here on the Alex Jones Show, live exclusively, email me in a confirmed email and say it's awesome that GMOs and other things like that are killing people because the world needs to depopulate and he hates people. He's mm -hmm. glad to see people dying. This Absolutely. is the exact kind of thing we're seeing now run rampant in government and the Monsanto executives are getting promoted. The TEPCO guys are getting pats on the back when the radiation amounts would kill people in a few hours if they were anywhere near the plant unprotected. I mean, that's what we're seeing. This is the government. This is the establishment right now. It's yeah. not an isolated incident. And if people realize that, then I think we can win. Yeah, you know, hopefully... Hopefully, with this uh, shutdown that's going on, and what I like to call the uh, Obama scare part, where he's going out of his way to shut people out of the monuments. And uh, these are monuments that were monuments not to government. They were monuments to the World War II soldiers. And yet, he's taking it as if it's his own personal monuments. And just the absolute contempt that he has for the public. And you just see this pervasively. You're talking about the slow kill that's going on with with uh, Big Pharma, the slow kill that's going on with these nuclear power plants. And yet, their answer is to just double down and more of the same, like you said. Making, more of the same. Building more Fukushimas. Yakso, the former NRC chair, said that we need to shut down every one of our nuclear reactors because they all have that same design flaw that we see at Fukushima. Yeah, exactly. Let me tell you a story as well. When we were on the way to the NSA data center in Utah to cover it and kind of give a check and balance on them, just as I'm doing with Fukushima right now, and they don't like that. That's a great story. I was on the plane and I got a little piece of a napkin and it said, you know, support breast, uh, support the fight against breast cancer and I had a little pamphlet about uh, radiation and chemotherapy treatment. And on the loudspeaker, they said, this flight is sponsored by cancer.org. Everyone should go to cancer.org and donate as much as you can to help breast cancer sufferers and everything. And they had all these booklets. I saved a bunch of them. I want to do a report on it. And it just shows the cheap and slimy pervasive element of this government promoting radiation therapy, chemotherapy, and ignoring real studies. Mm -hmm. I mean, on turmeric and items like that, ginger. There's, there's a research, uh, the piece of research that shows 80% decline in cancer cells with the use of some of these herbs. But they don't tell you about that. Mm -hmm. They don't tell you about any of that. It's insanity at the core, and it shows this is pervasive throughout all entire agencies of government, uh, just in bed with corporations. And as Alex has pointed out many times, they don't want you to look at the causes of cancer either. It's not just that they don't want you to look at safe and effective natural remedies that boost your immune system. They don't want you to see the causes of cancer, the GMO or the, the nuclear radiation that they're releasing. So they, they never really look at, they don't, they're, they're all about treatment because there's a lot of money to be made in cancer treatment. But they're not about cancer and the, investigation or the natural. The industry remedies. loves Fukushima. Mm -hmm. It's skyrocketing cancer cases. I mean, there was a 
piece of research done. It was heavily attacked immediately by everyone in the AMA. And within about an hour of its release, that said about 10,000 to 100,000 people have already died from Fukushima radiation. Mm. Now, that was attacked immediately just for them saying that, not even just saying that 100,000 people died. That wasn't even attacked at first. It was just saying that radiation could do that. Mm -hmm. They didn't even believe that. I mean, radiation now is a good thing. I mean, I guess we should bottle radiation and take it <laughs> for uh, overall health enhancement. I guess cancer, not, uh, the cancer organization of the government, the United States government and Japan should get together and they should fund Fukushima pills. And yeah. We should take them to enhance our overall immunity. They can bottle it. Maybe they can, uh, maybe they can do what the uh, nuclear industry and the aluminum industry did here. You know, they, they dumped their toxic waste, their fluoride so into our water system. So maybe that's the solution for Fukushima. They just take those highly radioactive storage tanks that are leaking and they're trying to contain them with a half a billion dollar ice wall. Maybe they should just dump that in the drinking the water like they, like they do uh, fluoride here. You know, it's nobody in, would taste yeah. it. It's and in the Pacific Ocean. That's right. That's right. At least it, we probably wouldn't have a taste unlike fluoride, right? <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. And that's the reality as well is that the big issue here is that you can't see this radiation. You can't see the effects of Fukushima. Things you can see, things like people not getting into World War II uh, monuments or not getting into the national parks. And that shows, by the way, the government thinks it owns every single thing yes. in the whole world that's owned by us. But that, we didn't build it. They, didn't they build built it. it. No, Obama yeah. built it with his bare hands. He won the war, not the World he War II veterans. He won the War II and yeah. built the monument, and mm -hmm. it's his. But right. that's visible. That is a visible threat. Or, for example, if you go to the store and there's not food there you want, then people will be mad or whatever. Uh, a police shutdown in Boston, martial law style. Those are visible things that are kind of easy to win against and kind of easy to fight against. And the mainstream media will pick it up because they have to because we force them to, the real authentic media. And people will look at it and they'll get the ad revenue and everything, even though sometimes they don't cover the essential items. But the problem with Fukushima, and I do know that most of the listeners are aware of this, but the fact is the general public is not because it's an invisible threat. If, if radiation was a yes. big green monster, it would be a big deal. But you go through your average day and you don't know what's happening. You get cancer five, ten years later and you don't know why. And then you go to the doctor and he said it's a genetic thing. It has yeah. nothing to do with your lifestyle, nothing to do with Fukushima radiation, nothing. It's all safe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've heard that over and over again. Well, thanks. And, and you've got something else to uh, talk to us about right after the break. We're going to continue to talk about Fukushima and the developments. And you haven't even gotten into your three disturbing facts about Fukushima that the government's covering up. So we're going to go into that in detail right after the break with Anthony Gucciardi from StoryLeak. Stay tuned. I had tried everything. I'd cut back the amount of food I was eating. I was lifting weights and jogging, but nothing was working. My body was literally starving for minerals and trace elements as well as key vitamins. And as soon as I had that, I immediately could eat half of what I was eating previously and be satisfied. Now, there are hundreds of great products at InfoWarsTeam.com, but I want to point out the three that have helped me lose 37 pounds in just two months. Products like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Pollen Burst, and Rebound when I started taking the Tangy Tangerine and other products every day, I lost more than 37 pounds in just two months. Now that's results. I want to challenge my listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com and to order just three of their products, and you will see the changes in the way you look, feel, and in your appetite almost immediately. Start your journey to health and wellness today. InfoWarsTeam.com. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight filling in for Alex Jones, and there is a train coming. And we were just talking about Fukushima. You may think that it's old news, but it's the story. Even though it happened over two years ago, there are still new developments in that. And we were just talking to Anthony Gucciardi from StoryLeak about uh, new developments at Fukushima. Tell us a little bit more about what's going on there, Anthony. Yeah, well, you hit the nail on the head. People think that Fukushima is an ancient you know, old story that happened and the radiation went and now it's gone. Mm -hmm. But the reality is just as early as September 4th, 2013, as I just wrote in this article now up on Infowars.com, the radiation levels of Fukushima spiked the mm -hmm. highest, it skyrocketed just about a month ago. So this event is not over. It, in fact, it's getting worse. Very precarious. It's, it's been, we've got a damaged reactor that's been kind of teetering now for over two years. And it's not getting any better because all the things that were dangerous about it are still there, but getting older. And right. this TEPCO company, they have workers that have a history of accidentally turning the power off, just destroying everything, using tape to fill in holes. Yeah. They're going to go in and try and surgically <laughs> uh, attack one of these rods and try and stabilize it a little bit. 
And some of the experts I talked to said there's a 96% chance they will fail. And I don't want them to fail. I don't want that to happen. I wish, you know, Fukushima would resolve itself magically, but that's not going to happen. And that's why we have to hit this on the head over and over and over again, because the government is covering this up 101. I mean, this is the very basics. And as you were saying in the previous segment, we've already had, as far away as Boston, we've seen evidence of windborne radiation that's Hot coming particles. in. So if they have another explosive event trying to remove these rods, that's going to have massive consequences for the United States, which is prevailing westerlies are going to bring it to us. First, it's going to go over the Pacific Ocean, contaminate fish, contaminate food. Then it's headed for the United States and not just the West Coast, as you point out, Boston as well. According to the doctors mm -hmm. I talked to, in the event of another explosion, which looks like it may happen if they go in, if they're foolish enough to go in and tamper with these rods again, not only will the workers, unfortunately, most likely die, but you'll have about a month to prepare yourself. About mm -hmm. one month after that happens, you better get yourself prepared. And we know now that the plant operators are caught, have been caught on record faking the readings of the radiation levels. They've been caught dumping it into the Pacific Ocean. They've been time and time again caught saying that, you know, it's over, it's fine, it's better now when the radiation levels are hitting new highs. This is something that if we don't force into the media, if we don't force into the radar of the general public, we'll just be like this cancerous tumor on the body of the planet. We're not even talking about just the United States right now. I mean, this mm -hmm. will obliterate the planet with radiation if it ultimately does explode and they're Absolutely. crazy enough to do this. Absolutely. And that's just one of the nuclear power plants. All right, so you've got Natural Society, which is the third largest natural health site. What would you recommend that we do to prepare for it? Okay, so one of the things that I've always had a challenge with is finding something to prepare myself for pretty much any disaster. And when I started Natural Society, it's because I recovered from Lyme disease naturally. And no one believed me, and I wanted to write about it. And thankfully, yeah, we get millions of visitors now. My also other website, storyleak.com, is doing well too. But what it came down to is I met Dr. Edward Group, who's been on this show before mm -hmm. and did an excellent job. It was an amazing interview. And we determined that to prepare ourselves, we wanted to create a form of iodine. But we looked. There was different forms of iodine in the market. They contained GMOs, mm -hmm. artificial sweeteners similar to aspartame, artificial preservatives, and even worse. I mean, it's to the point now where some of the bottles would dissolve the glass droppers within wow. a month and just destroy wow. it. So it has to be stable. We came up with a nascent iodine form, talked to Alex. He tested it out thoroughly because he was on a mission to find as well the best, absolute best form for him and his family. And then he wanted to give it to his kids too, which was essential. Came up with InfoWars Life Survival Shield nascent iodine. Perhaps we can talk about it specifically, but it is the best form, non-GMO, vegan, kosher. It's the only one I take, the only one Alex takes, period. And we just got, we were... When we introduced that, it immediately flew off the shelves. Yeah, we didn't have any more no supply left. Well, we've got a new supply in now, right? It's coming yeah. in, yes. Yeah. So I would recommend everyone get this, prepare yourself in the event of a disaster. Well, that's it for tonight. We'll be back uh, tomorrow at 11 Central, 12 Eastern. Alex Jones here to warn you about some of the most important health information you may ever hear. I'm talking about radiation, radioactive fallout, radioactive particles contaminating the Northern Hemisphere. Conservatively, since the 1940s, the Northern Hemisphere of our planet has more than doubled its background radiation. In fact, that was before Fukushima exploded. Now the levels are going up and up and up. Fish are contaminated in the Pacific, and the FDA, the EPA, and others, they're not worried about it. They've been raising the levels of what they claim is safe radioactive particles. Well, I began to discuss with my wife protecting myself, her, and of course our children. Most importantly, I have three small children, ages 10, 9, and 5. Radiation really affects children more than adults because they have fast-growing cells. All the literature is clear on that. And I went and talked to medical doctors, scientists, nuclear physicists, nutritionists, and I said, what's the number one thing I can do to protect my family? And they said, Alex, it's leave the Northern Hemisphere. Go south of the equator. That's where the radiation levels are very, very low. If you look at the wind patterns, the North hardly interacts with the South. And it's unfortunate that we've done this to our planet. So after more than two years of research 
into how to protect my family. Looking at all the literature, talking to the experts, across the board they agreed, iodine is key, but of the family of iodine, nascent, natural, non-GMO, non-factory iodine that comes from the earth is absolutely paramount for your thyroid and other functions in the body. The literature, the research, it's there. It's not my opinion. It is admitted that iodine is essential for the health of our bodies overall, and nascent iodine is the best form. Now, we're announcing the launch of InfoWarsLife.com, and we're going to bring you scores of products over the next few years that we're researching and developing. But nascent iodine is the first product we're coming out with because it's so important, and it's also listed as a fluoride detoxer. It does so many other things. Your body needs it, and when you don't have enough iodine, forget the radiation, your thyroid absorbs the sodium fluoride and other things. And it's the good iodine, the nascent iodine, that is able to block that and just do so many things uh, for your body and your health. I've been taking it. It's amazing. It's a lot better than coffee, I'm here to tell you. And that's why we are now offering our own nascent iodine that's double the strength, made in the best laboratory that is uh, FDA uh, certified and accredited. And it is double strength at half the price of the leading competitor. You know my rule. Bring you the highest quality products at the lowest prices we can so it's a win-win-win. I believe in you reap what you sow. So not only will you get the best deal on nascent iodine at InfoWarsLife.com for your general health and also for any type of emergencies or disasters, you will also be getting a great deal and supporting the InfoWar and our news operation, promoting the cure for tyranny, the First Amendment, promoting liberty and a rediscovery of the Bill of Rights and Constitution and true Americana that's made this nation so great. So please join me in being among the first to visit InfoWarsLife.com. We've got discounts if you buy the nascent iodine in bulk. I challenge you to try to find a better deal. We have the best deal out there and the best quality. In closing, here is probably the most important point. You don't just take nascent iodine when disaster strikes, when there's some new giant disaster. The Northern Hemisphere is already double what it was 60 years ago with the radioactive background. I believe from the research I've done and the experts I've talked to, it is key to take nascent iodine to protect your thyroid from the radiological disaster that's already happened and unfortunately future disasters that will happen. That's why it's important to fill your thyroid up now with the healthy nascent iodine so that the sodium fluoride, the radioactive isotopes, and the rest of it can't get in. That's the key. This is something that across the board has been shown in study after study to be an absolutely essential nutrient in the body. Until a few decades ago, the government put it in the salt because they knew you needed it. But then they took that out that's good for the thyroid and put the sodium fluoride in that's bad for it. Talk about eugenics, talk about soft kill, talk about an invisible weapon in the water supply. This stuff is on record as a detoxifier for the fluoride they're adding to our water. Nascent iodine and InfoWars Life Survival Shield in double strength at half the cost of the leading competitors. Please visit InfoWarsLife.com today. <laughs>